Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video, we will talk about pancreatic carcinoma. Pancreatic carcinoma, also known as pancreatic cancer, is a highly aggressive cancer that affects the exocrine portion of the pancreas, a vital organ that plays a crucial role in the regulation of blood sugar levels and digestion. Pancreatic carcinoma is one of the most deadly forms of cancer with a 5-year survival rate of only 10%. In this video, we will talk about the risk factors, symptoms, diagnosis, classification, stages and treatment of pancreatic carcinoma. So what are the risk factors? Risk factors for the development of pancreas carcinoma include smoking, obesity, age, as pancreatic cancer is more common in people over the age of 60, a family history of pancreatic cancer, chronic pancreatitis, which is a long-standing inflammation of the pancreas, and diabetes. Also lifestyle factors, such as alcohol consumption and nicotine, play a role in the development of pancreatic cancer, as well as the exposure to aromatic amines, such as nitrosamine. What are symptoms of pancreatic cancer? Pancreatic cancer can be difficult to diagnose because it often does not produce symptoms until the cancer has reached an advanced stage. The symptoms are also often non-specific and include abdominal pain, back pain, jaundice, which is the yellowing of the skin and eyes, unexplained weight loss, loss of appetite, nausea and vomiting. How can we diagnose pancreatic cancer? The diagnosis of pancreatic cancer usually involves a combination of medical history, physical examination, imaging tests and laboratory tests. Some of the common diagnostic procedures used in the diagnosis of pancreatic carcinoma include First, the medical history and physical examination. Usually we ask about the patient's medical history and perform a physical examination to check for any signs or symptoms of pancreatic carcinoma, such as abdominal pain, jaundice, weight loss or changes in bowel habits. The second is imaging tests. Imaging tests, such as CT scan, MRI, PET scan and ultrasound, are used to produce detailed images of the pancreas and surrounding tissues to identify any abnormalities or tumors. Signs for malignancy include the visualization of a mass or tumor, the dilation of the bile ducts, distortion or blockage of the pancreatic duct, and the visualization of enlarged lymph nodes or metastasis to other organs. And third, biopsy. A biopsy is a procedure in which a sample of tissue is taken from the pancreas and examined under a microscope to look for cancer cells. This can be done using different techniques, such as fine needle aspiration biopsy, endoscopic ultrasound guided biopsy, or surgical biopsy. And last, blood tests. Blood tests such as the CA99, CEA, and liver function tests may be performed to check for specific markers or enzymes that are associated with pancreatic carcinoma. It is important to note that pancreatic cancer is often difficult to detect in its early stages because it may not cause any noticeable symptoms until it has spread to other parts of the body. This is why routine screening is not recommended for the general population. However, if a person has a family history of pancreatic cancer, or other risk factors, they may need to undergo more frequent screening tests. How can we classify pancreatic carcinoma? Pancreatic carcinoma can be classified into different types based on their cell types and growth patterns. The most common types of pancreatic carcinoma include adenocarcinoma. This is the most common type of pancreatic cancer accounting for about 85% of cases. It develops in the cells lining the pancreatic duct and grows quickly, 
making it difficult to detect in its early stages. The second type is neuroendocrine tumors. These are rare types of pancreatic cancer that develop in the cells that produce hormones in the pancreas. They grow slowly and can be benign or malignant. The third type is Asiner cell carcinoma. This type of pancreatic cancer develops in the cells that produce digestive enzymes in the pancreas. It is a rare type of cancer that tends to grow slowly and can be treated with surgery if detected early. The fourth type is solid pseudopapillary neoplasm. This is a rare type of pancreatic cancer that occurs mostly in young women. It is a slow-growing tumor that tends to be less aggressive than other types of pancreatic cancer. And the last type is the pancreatoblastoma. This is a rare type of pancreatic cancer that occurs mostly in children. It develops in the cells that produce digestive enzymes in the pancreas and can grow quickly, making early detection and treatment critical. Pancreatic carcinoma can also be classified based on its location within the pancreas. The pancreas has different regions, including the head, body, neck and tail. Tumors that develop in these regions may have different symptoms and require different treatment approaches. The location-based classification of pancreatic cancer includes first the pancreatic head cancer. This type of pancreatic cancer develops in the head of the pancreas, which is located near the duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine. Tumors in this region may cause symptoms such as jaundice, abdominal pain and weight loss. The second type is the pancreatic body cancer. This type of pancreatic cancer develops in the body of the pancreas, which is located in the middle of the organ. Tumors in this region may cause symptoms such as abdominal pain, weight loss and fatigue. And the third type is the pancreatic tail cancer. This type of pancreatic cancer develops in the tail of the pancreas, which is located on the left side of the organ. Tumors in this region may cause symptoms such as abdominal pain, back pain and weight loss. Now I would like to talk about the staging of pancreatic cancer. In stage 0, abnormal cells are present but have not invaded nearby tissues or organs. This is also called carcinoma in C2. In stage 1, the cancer is confined to the pancreas and has not spread to nearby lymph nodes or distant sites. The tumor is usually less than 2 cm in size. In stage 2, the cancer has spread to nearby tissues or organs and may involve nearby lymph nodes. The tumor is usually larger than 2 cm in size. In stage 3, the cancer has spread to nearby lymph nodes and may have invaded nearby major blood vessels, but there is no involvement of the celiac axis or the superior mesenteric artery. And in stage 4, the cancer has spread to distant sites in the body or involves the celiac axis or superior mesenteric artery. How can we treat pancreatic carcinoma? Treatment options for pancreatic carcinoma depend on several factors, including the stage of the cancer and the overall health of the patient. Surgery is often the preferred treatment option if the cancer is detected early and has not spread beyond the pancreas. There are different types of surgical procedures that may be used to treat pancreatic carcinoma, including first the Whipple procedure. This one is also called pancreaticoduodenectomy. This is the most common surgery for pancreatic head cancer. It involves removing the head of the pancreas, the duodenum, a portion of the stomach, the gallbladder and the common bile duct. The remaining portion of the pancreas is then reconnected to the small intestine. The second surgery is the distal pancreatectomy. This surgery is used for tumors located in the body or the tail of the pancreas. It involves removing the left side of the pancreas and sometimes the spleen as well. 
The third surgery is the total pancreatectomy. This surgery involves removing the entire pancreas as well as the duodenum, gallbladder, spleen and nearby lymph nodes. This surgery is usually reserved for rare cases when the cancer has spread throughout the pancreas. And the last surgical option is the palliative surgery. In some cases, surgery may be performed to relieve symptoms caused by pancreatic carcinoma, even if the cancer cannot be completely removed. This may include procedures to bypass blocked bile ducts or to remove a portion of the tumor to alleviate pain. In some cases, chemotherapy and radiation therapy may also be used to shrink the tumor before surgery or to destroy any remaining cancer cells after surgery. If the cancer has spread to other parts of the body, treatment options may be limited and the focus will be on managing symptoms and improving the patient's quality of life. This may involve palliative care, which is a specialized form of medical care that aims to alleviate pain and other symptoms associated with advanced cancer. That's it for this video, thank you for watching and if you like our channel please subscribe. Hopefully see you again in the next video.